Okay gang, I am heading down to Off Grid Acres and I just wanted to take a video of this. I noticed this, I noticed this a couple of weeks ago. Look at all the trees on the side of the road that are dead or dying or burning up or what have you. They look like mostly, I think they're longleaf pine maybe or loblolly, I don't know. But it's literally all alongside the road here, wherever this type of tree is, we just burnt up. It doesn't look normal, normal or natural to me. Any ideas? Is it that geoengineering aluminum, barium, strontium garbage that they're spraying us with? It doesn't look like a normal life cycle for a pine tree. It's sad. Now these aren't even evergreens, man. These are uh, just, I don't know what kind of scrub brush that is or what have you, but look at it. It's all dead. It appears that the younger trees seem to be dying off in mass, at least down here. What's it like where you're at? It's a bumpy ride coming down here. I could bring the tractor down here and grade the road again. I've done that in the past. I'm not going to bother doing it unless it becomes impassable. I feel like maybe I'm just inviting more people to come back here if it's easy. So I got four wheel drive. I'll make it hard. But it doesn't stop everyone from driving down this road. I still see tracks. I don't know who it's from or what the deal is, but I know I've cut way down on the amount of people that come back here. And the gate stops them cold right there for the most part, I think. Well, what do we have here? This is where the bigger peach tree used to stand. If you guys saw the video a couple weeks ago when I was down here, maybe it was longer than that, but doggone beaver got my smaller peach tree closer to the lake and it came up and got the big one that had ripe peaches on it and I'm pretty ticked off about it. Now, some of y'all warned me about that and you even told me a couple things I can do to stop it. In fact, the one that stands out is when y'all said put some type of flashing around the bottom of the tree. And I'll show you that I did do that after I saw this peach tree taken down. It was really, honestly, the, the very next time I was down here, but I did do that. There's my apple tree. It's got some flashing around the bottom of it and so far so good, so. Kind of a bummer, guys. In fact, a, a really big bummer, but. Beaver two, Tommy zero bummer anyway I drove in and I told you I'm keeping most of the people out of here but I decided to go back and check those logs that I put across that trail and of course somebody moved them and they're coming in through there again so I got to go back and chain up these logs it's 95 freaking degrees out and I got to go do that because some people just don't get the message that this isn't their property and it's against the law for them to be trespassing on my property especially when it's posted some people. Time to kick it up a notch. Don't want to be doing this crap today. All right. This is a much bigger job than I want to be doing out in this heat with no equipment. I put a couple more three logs in there. The idea is that there's no way I'm going to be able to build an impenetrable barrier. I mean, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. But the idea is, just like you know, when you're securing your home, is you want to make it as difficult as possible, in the hopes that you know whatever thief is casing your house looks at your neighbor's house and says, "Ah, that's easier. I'll go there instead." I'm trying to do the same thing here, I'm trying to make it difficult enough where whoever's coming through here says, "You know what? It ain't worth it. I'll go a different way." I just I can't get over the people that think. They can just come back and do whatever they want. It, it really it gets my goat. And if I find this 
insert choice word here, guy. We're going to have words. Now, that's what I can show you. I'm fixing to do a couple other things here that I can't show you for liability reasons. Well, I'm not sure if you can see it in the light there, but you see the new fuse block holder that I put in here. You see how it's wrapped around the lugs there. It doesn't look good. It's not. It's probably not real safe. So I'm going to disconnect everything right now. I have my generator running so I can continue with the air conditioning because it is just fuego out. And I'm going to put these lug cable lugs on and hopefully it works out a-okay. I'll show you how it works. Unfortunately, i got to work underneath this table here because this is the way it's set up. So I'm going to turn off the charge controller so no more power is coming in. That'd be smart. Okay. So now, my charge controller is not bringing, bringing in any more juice, so I think I can safely mess with this. Sorry about the angle and the light, guys. Now, I didn't have the lugs down here last week. If, uh, I probably showed you in another clip how I made them. pieces flying in my eyes. Alright, now I'm going to use I guess I'm going to that block to pound on this hammer to pound with and there's my crimping tool. Let's see if this works. I've never tried using this tool with with the lugs that I make. We'll see how she works. Well, it's not perfect, but it seems to be working. I'm deaf now. I need ear protection for this. Doggone clanging. Okay, I finagled it on there. Let's see if we can get it to stick. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Some heat shrink could have taken care of that, and I didn't. I have it at home. Dang it. A little bit of spark there. It's coming from the solar panel, from the charge controller. I don't think there's supposed to be any spark. Well, gang, not what I would call pro, but nothing here is pro. As long as it works, it's functional. I don't burn my cabin down. We'll see. <laughs> well, it turns on. So we got that going for us. Power is flowing. Well, I want to say props to my friends over at Lori Family Homestead, and I'll put a link to their channel in the description. They sent me a message several months ago. We talked about uh, one of these toasters. This is a Coleman camp stove toaster. And this should work just fine either on my camp stove or the gas stove that I have over here. I couldn't toast bread down here. I didn't have a toaster. Uh, I might have mentioned that in a the video. They reached out to me and said, hey, we bought a bunch of extras. You want one? And sure enough, it showed up in the mail. So thank you so much, Lori Family Homestead. They're good peeps. We appreciate it. Swell, folks. And uh, every time I toast some bread or an English muffin or whatever, I'm going to think of y'all. Thanks. Again, guys, you, you all know that I don't like killing stuff just for the sake of killing stuff but this guy i caught him red-handed he's the one that ripped down all my sunflowers and i saw him over by the melons as well so i think he's the guy that's eating my melons i got a ton of squirrels back here like dozens and dozens and they're always running around one of them was making a nest in the eve of my house i don't know if it was this guy or not but he seems to want to hang out very close to the house, and uh, he ate his last sunflower seed, that's for sure. I couldn't help myself. I didn't want to let it go to waste. I figured as long as it was out here, I'd throw pizza in and see, see how I cook a frozen pizza with the old sun oven. It's up over 350 degrees. Looks like it's cooking nicely. 
Now the challenge is going to be trying to get that out of there without it flopping over on me. We'll see how that works. It went in frozen. It's going to come out not frozen. <laughs>